Production funding for Homework Hotline is provided by New York State United Teachers. Working to educate and assist students, provide medical care and support, and strengthen local communities. NYSEC, working for communities across New York State. Hey now, let's take a moment So we all can figure it out What it's all about It's the Homework Hotline The Homework Hotline The Homework Hotline The Homework Hotline, the homework hotline. The homework hotline. Welcome to Homework Hotline, I'm Craig Zaramba. And I'm Dana Minio. Homework Hotline is the place where you can get the tools you need to succeed both in and out of the classroom. For more information on Homework Hotline, go to our website, homeworkhotline.org. Here you can find games, other online resources, and the latest episode of our show. And don't forget, we want to hear from you on this topic. Should all forms of public transportation, such as buses and subways, be free? Why or why not? You can weigh in on this question and tell us what you think by visiting us on Facebook and leaving us a message, tweeting us by using the hashtag HHVoiceIt, or by visiting us on our website, homeworkhotline.org, and clicking on the Voice It button. Now remember, the most thought-provoking responses will be put on air. The answers will be shared on tomorrow's Homework Hotline. We also want to remind our viewers that a little later in the show, Dave Will from the Seneca Park Zoo will be here with Doug the Armadillo. All right. And now let's get to tonight's creature teaser. <laughs> This reptile lives in the jungles of Southeast Asia. It can grow up to eight inches long, has a flat body and a long tail. It eats a simple diet of ants and termites. The jungle floor is full of dangerous predators, so this creature stays up in the safety of the treetops. It is a good climber, but has a special, special skill to help it travel from tree to tree, an extra set of ribs with skin webbing between them. When this creature is in the tree, the ribs stay tucked along its side like wings. But when it jumps into the air, these ribs spread out like an umbrella and help it fly. This reptile can travel up to 30 feet with each jump. It uses its long tail to steer midair. Now, if you think you can solve the creature teaser, give our hotline a call at 1-866-264-5904 or just answer it on our website, homeworkhotline.org. Answer correctly and you could have a chance to share the answer at the end of the show. Every correct response will be added to our Hotline Hall of Fame, earn enough points, and you could win a tablet at the end of the season. All right, yesterday on Homework Hotline, we helped Brittany figure out what percent of her budget she wanted to spend on each person on her shopping list. Today, we keep following Brittany on her holiday shopping and see what happens to her holiday budget when she treats herself to a snack while shopping. All right. All cool. right. So I'm going to go to the board and okay. I'm going to keep us going with Brittany. All right. Cool. All right. Come along. All right. This is just a review of yesterday. Brittany has decided to spend 50% of her money on her parents and the remainder on her sister, brother, and friend. That means of the $120 she has to spend, she will use. Now remember, 50% is 50 over 100, which is equal to a half. So whatever the half of the 20 is, is what she, or 120 is what she's gonna spend total on her mom and dad. So she's gonna do $60 total on mom and dad and that leaves her the other sixty dollars total to do on her brothers and sisters and uh, brother sister and friend i'm sorry but if you remember she was going to split that evenly between mom and dad so mom's going to get thirty dollars and dad's going to get thirty dollars and then she has to split this other sixty three ways, so that means each of the others are going to get $20. Okay, so that's just to remind us where we're at from yesterday. So let's take a look at today. 
Now, Brittany has received a coupon in the mail toward her dad's gift. She's going to get 25% off that item. If she, dad's gift is originally $30, remember that's how much she said she could spend on dad, how much will she spend now with that 25% off? There's two different ways to do this. Typically, if it's a discount, what I have my students do, all percents are out of 100, so we would take 100% and we would tr subtract the discount, or the 25 in this case. That means 75% of her original budget is what she's really gonna spend on dad. So how much is she gonna spend on her dad? Well, let's see. I'm gonna set up the proportion 75 over 100 is equal to N and dad's 30, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we cross multiply. I have the calculator here to do it a little quicker. So 75 times 30 is 2,250. And then you have your 100 N if you do the cross multiplying. You divide by the 100. And so she's going to spend $22.50 on her dad. Don't forget to label your stuff because that actually helps us know if you're talking dollars or if you're talking cups or what you might be talking about in your problem. So $22.50 on her father. So now that means she saved herself $7.50 and she's got to decide, what am I going to do with this $7.50? She has decided that she's gonna add that to her mom's money. So now she's got 30 plus the 750, which means she's gonna do $37.50 on mom. If she does that, what percent of her overall budget has she spent on her mom? Well, remember, we're finding percent, so it's X over 100 is equal to 37.5 over 120. And I can do all this right on the calculator. You can cross multiply here, so you get 37.50 divided by 120. So let's do that. Whoops, put the pen down, 37.50 divide by 120. And we're gonna get 31.25%. So she's gonna spend 31.25% on mom if she puts that money with her mom's gift. So let's take a look now. In set, what if she decides she wants to split it evenly with her sister, her brother, and her friend instead? Because she's spending a little bit more on mom than she is dad. She doesn't wanna show that favoritism. So let's see what percent that brings her friends and her br brother and sister too. So we have 750. We're going to divide that by three, which is 7.5 divided, whoops, divided by three equals 250 each. So that means you're now going to do 2250 on the brother, 2250 on the sister, and 2250 on her friend. So now, if we want to find out what percentage of the 120 she's spending on each, again, we're going to do the X over the 100 is equal to 2250 over the 120. You cross multiply here, so you have X is equal to 2250, 2, and give myself a little room to write my denominator of 120. Again, 2250 divided by 120. That's equal to 18.75% on each of her friend, her brother, her sister, and her friend. But you know what? After all that thinking and everything, Brittany's gotten hungry. She's decided she's gonna just spend that 750 and buy herself a pretzel and a soda. So she now needs to figure out how much of the budget she's spending on herself. So we're gonna do X over 100, and we have $7.50 over 120. Again, we're gonna cross multiply. So you get 750 divided by 120. 
and we're going to divide that by the 120. We're going to get, she's going to spend 6.25% of her $120 budget on herself. I really hope that helps. I'm with her. I'll spend the money on me. I like the pretzel and soda. All right, I hope that helps you. King Philip came over for great spaghetti is a silly way to remember the classification of animals and plants in science. The classification order is kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Now we'd like to welcome Dave from the Seneca Park Zoo to the show. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? Hi, Dave. How are you? Hello, oh, good. What did you bring to us today? Oh, what did I bring to you today? I brought, yes, like? volleyball. I brought um, our southern three-banded armadillo. His name is Doug. Okay. Uh, and he comes from South America. And if we look at this TV behind us, no, we're not going to see anything. Um, I believe that this guy comes from normally the center of South America. He's going to be from the lower Brazil, Paraguay, kind of Argentina area. And what's interesting about him is he is located centrally in South America. So, right. see. so it looks like I see a little bit of hair, but it, what is the other stuff made of? Or what so is that? He is covered in armor, and this armor is made of keratin. Right. So it's the same thing that our fingernails are made out of, sure. or our, um, our hair right. is made out of. And it's basically a specialized nail that okay. covers his whole body. Uh, this gives him protection, so he can actually okay. roll up into a ball. Um, and because he is so small, um, he can roll all the way up into this ball, and he can keep his head all the way down to his butt, and then he stay nice and protected cool. in this shell. Nice. Now, is he an adult? Uh, he is an adult, yes, he is an adult. Uh, and he is a three-banded armadillo, so he is going to be full size. Uh, and his size is determined by his three bands he has here on his back. Gotcha. So he has three bands on his back, and that just means how big or how small he'll be. So that is determined. So the ones we have in the United States, they're nine-banded armadillos. Well, they're really Much big. larger, yeah, they'd okay. be a good-sized armadillo. And they can't roll up into a full ball like this guy can because they're just too big. Gotcha. So what it normally uh, they'll have to do is find another way to protect themselves. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, is Doug a reptile or a mammal? Uh, good question. We get this a lot at the zoo. Um, he's an odd-looking one, so <laughs> tough to yeah. figure it out. Uh, to be classified as a mammal, you have to have some kind of hair. Yep. You have to have live birth, yep. and you have to milk your or nurse your young with milk. Yes. So this guy fulfills all of three of those things. Uh, he has hair on his belly here, uh, and the other two we can just kind of take from my word. Okay. Um, other than that, <laughs> he is uh, uses these hairs much like whiskers. Uh -huh. So when he is down in his ball, protected, his senses are down. So what he does is he uses these little hairs on the side to kind of sense right, if anybody's on the that. outside you of can his see body. He's in a mm -hmm. Yeah, he is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I, I can see he has very long nails. Is it, does he dig? Is so he a digger? So his name is Doug because uh, he dug so many holes. So <laughs> we like to have some fun at the zoo. So what he does is um, he does like to dig. He's related to sloths and anteaters. So okay. sloths have amazingly long yeah, nails, yeah, um, different purposes, but still very long. Yep. Uh, and anteaters, what he does is he'll dig down for food. Uh, he's mostly going for insects. Uh, he'll look for termites. He'll look for anything like that. And then he'll eat them off of underneath the ground or on top of the ground. Uh, but he does not burrow uh, for sleeping purposes. He'll find a hole that's pre-made. Uh, his jigging area is kind of centrally located. He can't dig a hole big enough to put his whole body in. Oh, all right. So he has okay. to find a pre-made, prefabbed burrow. Oh, mm -hmm. very cool then. Yeah. Um, do they have any other unique adaptations? Uh, he has many, many unique okay. adaptations, as you can see. Uh, but one of them that may not be as evident is they can swim. So when he swims, he can do one of two different strategies. Uh, one is running across the bottom. Uh, they're not very buoyant if they don't want to be, so they can be right on the bottom if you'd like and just run across like a stream or a creek. Sure. Also, if he thinks that's too deep or dangerous, he will then float on top of the uh, water source. So he can inflate his uh, intestinal tract. He can get a lot more air inside of him and then use it as buoyancy and then cool. truck across the top of a river or a stream. Oh, it's all happy. Yes. Oh, yeah. Look at him. Yeah, he wants to demonstrate. Right? <laughs> look, I can swim. Okay, now he has a lot of adaptations, but um, are there any threats that they can't handle? So, 
amazingly specialized little tank this guy is. Uh, but uh, one thing you can't really fight against with your adaptations is habitat loss. So one thing he's experiencing in his natural range is just human encroachment. Uh, we're using the land, even in positive ways, it can still displace these little guys, uh, especially through slash and burn farming and things sure. like that. Mm -hmm. So now habitat loss is, seems it's a kind of an issue in our area. What are yes. some things that we can do to help um, with local species around here? So what we can all keep doing is just recycling those plastics, uh, reusing, recycling your plastics, making sure that we're not increasing <laughs> the size of our landfills and things like that. Uh, also, just general basic good practices of being a person, you know, turn off your energy and things like that. And then also um, build habitats. We build pine cone bird feeders uh, oh, yeah. at the zoo all the time or things like that. Sure. So make sure that we're building uh, little bits of habitat at home or in your schools and things like that. And then we can uh, kind of create habitat for them at as we kind of take it over as well. Cool. So yeah. Excellent. Well, thanks for coming in, Dave. Thank yeah, you very Jane. much it looks for like having Doug us. Doug is ready to go yes. too. Yeah. <laughs> He's really moving there. So if you would like to learn more about the Seneca Park Zoo and see other videos about animals, visit our website, homeworkhotline.org. And now, stay right there. We'll be back in a second. Here's a fun saying to help you remember the basic needs of the human body. Oh, can Venus flies make pretty webs? This actually helps you remember oxygen, carbohydrates, vitamins, fats, minerals, protein, water. One thing I've seen Doug outside um, at other venues, and mm -hmm. they'll put him on the ground, and he looks just like he floats because his shell comes down to the ground. His little, you don't see his legs, and he's just oh, like, you don't see, oh wow, that's right kind of cool. Yes. So I'm going to go over the board, and we're going to work on some strategies because we saw that Brittany almost blew her budget by buying some stuff herself, which is a good thing to do. So let's take a look. Okay. All Sounds right. good. So we're talking about Brittany and her budget. We've been talking about how what a budget is and finances and how things that you can do to help and save some money. All right, so what are some strategies that Brittany can use to help with her budget and manage her budget? Because we just saw that if she has extra money, like me, I just want to spend it. And then next thing you know, that money's gone, and I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? I needed to get this. All right, so one of the things that... Uh, a lot of people forget about doing is you want to make a plan, all right? And Brittany was really good about doing that. She said, I'm going to spend this much on mom and dad and this much on the rest of my brothers and sisters, my friend, all right? And one thing I know which is really important to do is you want to make a list, all right? Have an idea in your head of what you actually want to get or what you want to purchase with the money that you've set aside because a lot of stores, they lure you in with like a sale and then they have all of these things around. So you come in and you're like, oh wow, that's pretty. Ooh, bling over there. Next thing you know, you've got all this other stuff in your cart that wasn't on the list and you've gone and totally spent your budget money on other stuff, all right? So next thing you want to do is do a little bit of research, all right? Um, I don't know specifically what Brittany was going to buy with her budget money, what she set aside for mom and dad, all right? But when you do some research, is there a sale? You know, when does the sale start and when does it end? Um, I know I've gone to a store and you have a coupon or you have a, a voucher for something. You go to the store and they're like, uh, that doesn't start until Sunday. And you're like, oh man, now I just wasted gas. I went here and I, I go home with nothing. So then I got to come back in a couple days. All right. One other thing is if the local store doesn't have the item that you have is can they contact or can they requisition it from another store and have it sent over so you don't have to trek all around the city trying to get the item that you're actually looking to purchase. And that's a big thing too because um, we'll get into that in a second, why that is a big thing and how that affects us, all right? Another thing that I've actually done is can you get a rain check for the item? So let's say you go into the store and they have a certain amount of item there. Let's say you're looking at a game for a system that you have or it's a, a wrench that you need for building something, all right? So if, if it's a hot ticket item, a whole bunch of people are gonna come in and buy that thing. So the next thing you know, if they sell out and it's a, a sale, can I get a rain check so that I can still get the discounted price for that item when it comes back in stock? And another thing like I like to do is I'll actually call the stores. How many of these do you have on hand? Because if, if it's a big ticket item and a lot of people are purchasing it and they only have 25, I'm not gonna get in my car and drive to the store because now I've used gas, I've used time that I could be doing something else to get there and find out that they don't have any for me, all right? Now, another thing that we all like to do is we like to compare 
two or three or more different stores. All right, because sometimes you can get away with using a little bit of a variation of an item or a, a sale or a sweater or a shirt, and um, it might be a little cheaper at one store that's a little closer, or it, it might be a little bit farther away and it might be a little cheaper. So then that gets into the, we're gonna be talking about that, how you can save some money uh, doing some other things. Now, a lot of things that we do nowadays is we pull out our phone, we iPad or computer, and we actually shop online, all right? If you're, and online should actually be one word, not, and uh, there should be a connecting there instead of just on and line, it should be online. So when you go online, you wanna visit their store, all right? What is the store that you're looking for? If you're looking at a specific game, you wanna to go to like GameStop or you wanna to go to Walmart or whatever the game system is that you're using, you wanna make sure you visit their website because they might actually have a discount on that item on the website that they're not advertising in the store, hoping that you actually stay with that company and purchase through them. Another thing that I forgot to put up on here is a lot of stores will offer you the same pricing for a sale item of the same item at another store. Because what they want is once you get into their store, they wanna keep you in there and they want you to spend your money at their store. So they'll say, well, uh, we know that this company or this other store has the game for that and we don't have it at that price, but if you bring in their flyer, we'll sell it to you for that same price. And that's a really good thing to look at, all right? so. The last thing here, and this goes with a whole bunch of things that I've already kind of talked about, is you want to plan your trip, all right? A lot of, fee a lot of people are going to forget about what it costs to get into the car and run to a bunch of different stores, all right? Um, myself and Donna, we were talking about this when gas was really expensive. We both made lists, and if we needed to go to the store, you made a store to the hardware store, to the grocery store, and stopped someplace else, so you only made one trip out at the car and then made it back home. Instead of having to go, oh, I need to go to the hardware store because I need some else, so then you go to the hardware store, you come back. Oh, now I gotta go get milk at the grocery store. So now you gotta get in the car and go to the grocery store and come back. So now you're using, if you plan your trips and you can make it in one big loop, that way you're using less gas, there's less stress, and because gas costs money. And if you're like Brittany, maybe she actually drives a car. Maybe she actually has to put gas in it because mom and dad are saying, uh, if you're driving, you're gonna pay for the gas because we're not gonna do that. So now she has to budget that into what she's spending as well, all right? And when you get in the car, you gotta deal with the traffic, all right? Uh, especially the holiday seasons. I know around here, some of the streets, it's a madhouse. I mean, that's bumper to bumper. You get on a Saturday afternoon at dinner time, forget about it, all right? And that deals with the stress, okay? So now we've given Brittany a whole bunch of different kind of strategies, and I'm hoping that I've given you some strategies too that you can help with. Hey, mom, um, if we're gonna go to the store, can I go to this store because it's right on our way or it's on the way back? So I'm hoping that helps you guys out with how to set up a budget and how how to manage that budget throughout the seasons. Thanks a lot. When you think of Egypt, some of the things you might think of are the Nile River, the Great Pyramids, and the Sphinx. Egypt's largest foreign income comes from the tourists who flock to this country to see some of the wonders of the world. If the Nile River didn't run through Egypt, the whole country would be desert. The Nile is the longest river in the world and runs from south to north and empties into the Mediterranean Sea. Because of the direction this important river flows, Egypt is divided into two sections, Upper Egypt, which is located in the south, and Lower Egypt, which is in the north. Egypt's population has been growing rapidly, which has put strains on the country's resources. Most people live in the small, narrow area along the Nile River. With so many people in such a little area, overcrowding has become a big concern with schools, apartment buildings, and hospitals. All right, we have a winner in tonight's Creature Teaser. Hello. Hi, Chase, how are you? Good. All right, so what was this creature that we are teasing you about tonight? Uh, Draco is here. All righty. All right, did you know something that we didn't know about the Draco lizard? Oh, uh, well, my uncle had it as a pet. So. Really? So you actually have third hand experience. Did you actually see this thing fly? Yep. Really? How cool is it, that? It would fly, it'd fly from a perch she had on in the corner. Right. Um, it'd fly under his head. 
Wow, wow, how cool is that? So how long does the Draco lizard live? Or how long does your, uh, what was it, your uncle still has this? Um, it's like seven to ten years. Wow, that's pretty cool. Did he have a male or a female? Because I noticed that there's some coloration difference based on male and female. Uh, he never told me, but it had orange, so I was predicting it was a male. Ah. Okay, because the underside of a male is blue and the underside of a female is yellow. So I wonder if it, maybe it was a female. I, maybe. Did your uncle name the lizard? Oh, yeah, he, he, na he named it uh, um, Vancouver. Vancouver, right. <laughs> That's right. kind of cool. All right, Chase, <laughs> thank you very much for calling and congratulations. Don't forget, every correct response goes into our Homework Hotline Hall of Fame. Earn enough points and you could win a tablet at the end of the season. Tomorrow on Hotline, we will be learning about the positives and negatives of dams. We will also help Brittany figure out which holiday sale gives her the most bang for her buck. See you then. Good night. Good night. Production funding for Homework Hotline is provided by New York State United Teachers. Working to educate and assist students, provide medical care and support, and strengthen local communities. NYSET, working for communities across New York State.